All right, lesson 69, rotating 2D figures to form 3D objects. Um, this is something that uh, you may need to do usually on part one of your exam. These questions, once you get used to them, they're pretty simple. But um, think about, um, we, we talked about cross sections before, right? Um, but think about like in the picture here, like a revolving door. All right, think about a revolving door. Um, you, you, ever, you ever go through those doors? They're kind of fun to go around. You remember the movie Elf where, where he goes in, you know, around, 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 around. Um, anyways, you see how if you just look at one window pane, okay, I'm talking about this right here. Say this right here, just this, okay? It's actually just a rectangle. See that? And that's just rotating around this. It's rotating around the center of the door. It's rotating. And what's it actually making? What is the shape of the well? What's the shape of the well that, the, that needs to be made? Well, it makes a circular shape. And the entire well that you're actually standing in, if you just walk in the door and just stand there, what are you actually standing in? You're standing in a cylinder. Okay, So a rectangle revolving around an axis creates a cylinder and that's kind of what we're going to be looking at in this in this um, in this lesson so here we go a cross section of the door see a rectangle is a cross section where it's just the the door is a cross section all right and imagine imagine rotating that around the center of the door and what's going to be created it creates this shape right here all right so imagine as the door revolves it filling the entire space of the cylinder all right, so what's created from a rectangle revolving around um, an axis? A cylinder is created. All right, so that's kind of what we're doing. And, and that, this kind of, so I'm just going to read this here. So a different way to fill space and create volume is to rotate 2D figures about an axis. The technique gets used quite a bit in higher math to determine the volume of a shape. In calculus, we find ourselves finding the area under a curve for all kinds of different shapes. This is great preparation for these ideas. So in calculus, you'll have to find the area under the curve, which is related to the volume of an object that could be created by rotating. It's kind of advanced for what we're doing now. But we just need to understand that if I have, see this shape right here? This right here? This general shape right here? And then I have, as long as I have an axis to rotate around, see this axis right here? If I rotate this function around that axis, look what's created. Okay, this horn-shaped thing. So somebody who's going to design a horn, for example, all right? Somebody who designs a horn, got to tell the, tell the manufacturer how to make the horn. This is a mathematician or an, uh, an engineer who designs the horn, okay? Here's a, here's a diamond model, a model of a diamond, right? Uh, and you, you've seen pictures like this before. Well, it's all a function rotating that creates that shape. Okay, this is just a basic function, and then the area under the curve, and then this is like you could think of this as like a a a, a vase, right? Turned to the side, they, you know, it's just spinning around. So all I want you to do here is draw the the actual two dimensional shape and axis of rotation that would result in each of the following. So here's, here's the axis of rotation. We already kind of did this one. The two-dimensional shape is this right here. And I'm just kind of following that pattern. And then doing that, boom, that's it. There's the two-dimensional shape. And there would be the area of the two-dimensional shape right there. That's basically all this color here. And then if it rotated around, it would create this three-dimensional object. Okay, this one here, if I had a rot an axis right down the middle, right down here, okay, and then I would just say, all right, um, I need a little curvature over here, and then I need it to go straight down. And that's going to, and it rotates around that axis. Imagine rotating this right here. Imagine rotating this around that axis, around that line. What's going what's gonna to form? That's going to form, that diamond shape with the dome top. This one here, okay, basically that one's done for us. There it is, and then it would just be that right there, and then we would, so basically that one's already done. And then this one here, 
okay the two-dimensional it would just be that right there and then boom boom okay so you just need half of it basically and you rotate along the axis here's the axis right here rotate it around and you would see that three-dimensional shape take form all right so that's kind of the idea of this lesson here so determine the 3d solid that we form by rotating the cross section well because it's a rectangle a rotating around it's kind of just be like that revolving door so what's going to be created is a cylinder okay and then we'll draw it the best we can Okay, so what's going to be created is a cylinder. Boom, boom, boom. And that's just the circular thing just kind of shows the rotation. All right. Uh, this one's a mistake. It's supposed to look like this. So cross this off. It's supposed to look like this. Boom, boom. Okay. And, if, and that's a triangle. But if you rotate it around, that bottom is going to be circular. Triangle with a circular bottom, guys, is going to create a cone. Okay, so that's going to be a cone. What's it going to create in three dimensions? It's going to create a cone. All right, just think about that triangle. That triangle just rotating around there. Rotating around is going to create that circular bottom. All right, now, determine the rotational cross-section. A cylinder has a cone subtracted from its volume. What does the cross-section look like? I'm going to give this, this one to you, and then you're going to kind of see what's going on. So basically, I'm drawing the cylinder. If I want to draw the cylinder, it would look, don't draw this. If I want to draw the cylinder, I'll, I'll do this. The cylinder would look like that, okay? But I want to take this cone. I want that cone to be subtracted from it. So I need to kind of take away this right there. Oh, nope, that's wrong. I need to take away this. Okay, this right here needs to be taken away. I got to get rid of that. So I want to be left with just right there. So what's going to be left is this triangular shape right here. Okay. Imagine rotating that around the axis. Imagine rotating that around. What's going to happen? You're going to get that circular base for your cylinder, but because there's air here, see how there's nothing here? It's going to create that. It's going to create that um, that that open that open circle in the middle, that cone shape in the middle by having like a. It's almost like an inverted cone shape right there. So that's what it's going to look like. So you may have to be on a multi, on an exam, have a multiple choice, and say, all right, they'll give you. They might give you this, and you have to pick which shape that it would create. Or they might give you this, and then you have to pick which cross-section it would look like, Okay, what the, what the rotational symmetry would be. A potter creates pots and bowls using a pottery wheel. So another application in real life, right? It spins around, spins around, spins around. They're molding it, OK? But it's hollow on the inside. The wheel spins, and the potter shapes the clay. From the picture below, create the rotational cross-section. The rotational cross section, so if this is right in the middle, so this M is right in the middle here, right in the middle. So what's got to be over here? Okay, so we're going to have to have, um, you, could do, you could just kind of, it'll be like this. Okay, and then it's going to come straight down, go out a little bit, and it's going to go out and have that fat little piece there. And then, oh, that's really bad. All right. Something like that. And then it's going to go in. All right. And then back to the middle. Okay. So something like that. And then we got to have the, um, we want it to be open. So I don't want that piece right there, actually. We want it to be open on, uh, on the top. So we don't want to connect it over. And we do want a little thickness to our pot. So we're going to, I'm going to make this a little thicker. Just going to make that a little thicker. There we go. So now imagine rotating that around there, around, ro rotating around, rotating around, rotating around. It would create this pot with the, but it would be open. See how, see how it, there's nothing here? There's nothing here. That means it's going to be open on top. Use rotation cross section to sketch the solid. All right, this one here. See how they gave you kind of one side right there? So we know it's going to be, and it's kind of hard. We know it's going to be something like that. 
All right, kind of go like that. And then it's going to rotate around. So we're going to kind of assume it does something like this. We don't know how far it goes. And then we're going to cut it back in and do the same thing on the other side the best we can. That was pretty bad. <laughs> All right, something like that. Something like that when it comes back around. Of course, it would be symmetrical. This is not even close to symmetrical, so I need to redo that. Let me try and do this like that from each side and then kind of go like that and then kind of go like that. That's better. No, not still not great. But you get, you get the idea. It rotates around. It's going to create that shape and it's kind of like a vase. All right. It would create like a, that vase, vase or vase, whatever shape right there. Okay. Um, and that's about it. So now we're going to be doing these in class tomorrow and uh, it shouldn't take you that long. It's not that bad. Pretty simple how the you know the rectangle the triangle kind of creates the cone the rectangle creates the cylinder half circle is going to create a sphere stuff like that all right so um, we will practice these in class tomorrow.